Hello everyone. You may have heard that a new city building game called City Skylines came out about a week ago. I've been playing around with it for the past week or so and I find that I quite like it. It's a bit like the I guess the uh, recent SimCity uh, release in 2013, I guess it was, but it seems to be quite a lot better executed. So I'm going to do a bit of a real-time playthrough here. Uh, it'll likely be many parts. Uh, it's like any uh, city building game. It's pretty much open-ended. I'm going to be working with it in the basically the stock uh, for, um, configuration. That is, I don't have any actual mods enabled, though I do have some downloadable assets installed. Uh, so the first thing to get started is we'll start a new game. Now, unlike some other games, it's not a completely random map. That actually is somewhat beneficial in that it avoids the, the problem of uh, getting a starting point that you just can't work with. But that means we need to pick a uh, map to work on. As you can see, there's a fair variety here. Well, let's see. Well, I suppose I should just pick one here. Um, yeah, I'll go with two rivers. And Rockdale seems to be a reasonable name for the city. This wouldn't have any ship connections, but I, I can work with that. Okay, so start the game. Okay, so we start out with one small chunk here, one plot to work with. 
Uh, later on, as the city grows, we can purchase adjacent plots. Now, as you can see, the uh, area helpfully has a highway connection into it. But, you know, I'm going to pause the game here just so that uh, I can get the initial layout done. Now, first off, we have to build a road. Now, you can't build any other kind of road except a two-lane road until you've actually built a two-lane road. So I'm going to start by building along the coast. Now that snapping, um, it's useful when you need uh, precise angles and so on, uh, but it's not helpful when you're starting out with a freehand uh, road. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a straight road is I'm going to build the initial town as a grid and I'm going to line it up along the shore shoreline here the riverbank Okay, so there's my initial uh, road. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up in blocks that are uh, basically um, eight uh, grids wide, and I believe it's ten grids long. Okay, now that I've got that, I can enable the snapping now. And if I zoom in a bit here, now as you can see, these little guidelines that show up, they show up every, uh, well, it, it, at the gap, uh, so that you'd have uh, a road where you can, you and the zoning covers the whole space. Um, in the game, the zoning only ever extends a maximum of four uh, four grids from the road, whatever that road is. So here that would be if I was doing a four by like a an eight by eight block. Now this one over here seems to be wider. Whoops. Need to be able to see the grid to okay, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it's the same. It must be the uh, slope on the land. Anyway, initially, I'm going to need residential. Obviously, the uh, people need somewhere to live. But on top of that, I'm going to need some power. Now we'll start out with wind power and you really want to set this up in areas of high wind. Ah, there's the highest wind right there. Okay. 
So I'm going to set up a windmill. And I need to get power over to the subdivision. Now, you also need water, and you need both an intake and an outflow. Now, you definitely want to make sure that the intake is upstream from the outflow. Um, is you, at least initially you don't have a sewage treatment plant so you are going to be pumping raw sewage out into the water. Now this has to be connected up with pipes. Yeah, got to love that satisfying uh, sound when uh, when it links up with something else here. It's kind of nice. Now I also need to get the power over to the pumping station. Okay. Now, there's one more thing that absolutely has to be done before our uh, uh, people can actually arrive. And we have to give them some way to arrive. Okay, so pan the camera so I can see what I'm doing here. So I'm using one-way roads here because I don't have I don't have um, highways yet. Okay, now with one-way roads, you have to drag them in the direction they're going to flow, which is really, really annoying. But it's the way things are, so that's what we have to deal with. Now I need to get an access road over to here. And that will do as a temporary measure. So now I've got the absolute minimum for people to start coming in. So now I'll start the simulation up. Now this thing is basically Twitter. But Now the thing about power is building links it up, but empty zones don't. And where a power line's built, you can't zone. So Something you have to be careful of early on is that you don't end up uh, outspending your your cash because you can't take a loan at this point. I actually had that happen in one game I, I played. I ended up spending too much money right off the start and I just couldn't actually complete the required infrastructure for the for the uh, citizens to
to actually move in. So now I've got some demand for commercial and industrial, so I'll give them some commercial, as they'll obviously want somewhere to have a job. Uh, but early on, industrial is going to be important, so I'm going to build an industrial park over here. I think I'm going to no, I should do it over in this corner. So again, I'll uh, start with a free hand. Whoops, that's not going to work. I'll put it some distance from the edge. And I'm going to use the same grid structure here. I'll put the snap back on that I used in the other development. Now, if you're wondering why I'm putting this here, it's because there's a rail line in the next um, grid over. And that makes a big difference on uh, traffic if you can get your freight onto rail when the uh, opportunity arises. Okay, so Okay, so that get, makes it fairly well connected. Now I need to get water and power into there. Okay, so that gets water. Now I need to bring power over. And speed this up a bit here. Okay. still okay. What I really need to do is get the budget positive. Get rid of the deficit. Okay.
I didn't really want to do that. So I'll dezone those. Okay. Okay, so you can see that the uh, budget is a surplus now, which means I'll actually be able to pay for more infrastructure when it's needed. Okay, let's see how... Okay, I need more power. But I need 6,000 before I can actually do that. And I'm just about there. And... There we go. Ah! We hit a um, milestone here. Uh, that means that we've unlocked some additional services, education, health care, and trash handling. Uh, and we can mess with taxes and take out a small loan. Now our next... Um, okay, that makes us a little hamlet. Uh, next is a worthy village, and that's where we get to be able to purchase the next... Uh, plot if we uh, are ready for it and a whole bunch of other things okay so get back to here there's some money that comes with the uh, advancement too okay so I said I needed more power, so there we go. And while I can afford it, I'll build a third one. That gives us 24 megawatts, which should do for a little while. Now, it's really important to deal with trash at this stage of the game. Uh, you don't want it piling up. And I'm going to put the um, landfill over by the industrial. Well, no. I'm going to put it about midway along here. See, the uh, landfills will send out garbage trucks to collect trash. And uh, coverage, you know, depends on the roads and so on. So you don't want it too far that it has to travel. Now, I'm definitely going to need more... ...residential at some point here. So, I'm going to... set up some more roads here and now 
I just need something to actually spawn here. Or I can... Ah, there we go, something spawned. I could bring the power line through... Ah, there we go, I don't need to now. Okay, so the power's coming back on here. Now if I tilt the camera, zoom in a bit, You can see it looks a bit like an actual town. Okay, that just looks weird. Where's the... Uh, I need to fix the uh, graphic here. I don't know what this tilt shift means, but I had it off and things looked better. So, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, this looks a bit like, you know, a lot like a regular street. Now, when doing the development, I usually look straight down and I can see what I'm doing with the roads. Now, I'm going to bring the power in this way. That means I can remove that. And that means I can zone the rest of this. Right, I forgot to put water in there. Okay. went too far there. Let's try that again.
Okay, so you can see some demand for commercial is, is appearing. So I'm going to add some commercial zoning. And because I need to have more residential eventually, I'll add that in as well. Ah, here we are, next achievement level. And then we get uh, some more stuff. Uh, when we get to 1300, become a tiny town. Now, something that's important is uh, not neglecting city services like the fire department. So I'm going to build a fire station over here. And I'm also going to start educating my people. That will make them uh, happier, which means there will be more demand for. Whoops. Now let's see this nonsense here. Yeah, not really a lot of useful stuff there. By default, this chirpy thing here opens up automatically when there's a new message. That's that chiming sound. But I find the messages are not terribly useful uh, for gameplay. You might find differently, but uh, I've found that they're more of a distraction than a, than a help. I think what I'm going to do is uh, build a wider road at the next crossroad here. Uh, this area, you know, as long as it stays relatively uh, low density, uh, the two two lane roads are quite sufficient. But eventually some heavier traffic capacity is going to be needed through here. So I'll uh, build a uh, wider road through there now. which will straight before. Um, if I build the uh, wider road now, then I don't have to demolish things later when I have to. You know, I'm going to have to put a bigger road in. Okay, so... The goal at this stage is to get the population up rapidly to a level where you actually have all of the services that you want to uh, use. I'm going to put this on fast for the moment so that uh, my bank balance can improve to the point I can actually do something.
as you can see, if you're relatively careful with your uh, with your building, you don't go too fast. Oh, look, we have a fire. Um, if you don't go too fast, whoops. Uh, it's easy to get a budgetary surplus. So this number here is a, a moving average of the number of people coming in or leaving the town uh, over the past week, I believe it is. It changes daily. Um, Oh, okay, we've made it to Tiny Town. So that gives us Parks and Recreation and the High School. Parks and Recreation means we can build parks, and this is a good thing. Oh, look, we need power. Okay. Well. Okay, these are apparently going to be... Okay. Eventually, I want a, a clean power plant that's generating a lot more power, but that's not available at this point in time. Okay, so we have health care available. This is something the people probably would enjoy having. Okay, I said I was going to put a bigger road in here. You note that I went one tick further on that. Now I'm going to go for a four-lane road here. But since that's wider, that's why I went the extra tick. So as you can see, by doing that, the zone area still fills in fully. to my two-lane road. And I'll bring this across. Okay. Now, I'm going to upgrade this little bit here. To four lanes as well. And over on this side, I'm going to bring the four lane road out this way. And I've got a crime problem building here, so Whoops. So once I have enough money to uh, build the police station, I'll build one and that should clear up the crime problem. this over here. And as you can see the crime rates going down rapidly.
Now, I'll extend the water up to this new road here. have to follow the roads with the pipes it's just my OCD um, I just find it's neater that way and then I know where I've built the pipes show you something here so here's our uh, sewage outflow this here is the pollution in the water and that's why you want that downstream from the water intake up here These smaller park things here that's a add on asset that I acquired. Um, it fits nicer into a lot of cityscapes because it's smaller. The um, smallest one available by default is much, much larger. keep hitting escape to uh, get out of views when I'm not in a view. Um, I think that's old Sim City uh, and other games where you're always pressing escape. Well, I think a high school is in order. slow this back down and show you the overview here so here's the initial city plot that I'm working on and these are the ones currently available for purchase you note that they're adjacent on uh, a straight edge but not diagonally Now you can see what each particular one has. Uh, this one 
has the rail connection. So I'm going to actually purchase that one so then I can develop down this way. And that gives me access to this rail line once I unlock the uh, rail. And then I'll be able to reduce traffic coming from here. Uh, power's a problem again. So, yeah. So. If I speed this up. So I can actually build a power plant. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to build another one once I have the funds. Okay, that should keep me out of the woods for a little while. Now, I'm going to put a wider road in going um, this way as well. So again, I'm going one tick further so my grid matches up. And then... I'll build my road. Build my crossroads. Now, the linkage here doesn't quite work. So I'm going to build a temporary linkage like this and demolish some things here okay now that works Okay. Now, I need to bring water through here. Now, demand here. Ah, I made it to Boomtown, so again I can get another space if I want it. And I've got bus transport available. Now this is actually a good thing because you can alleviate traffic quite nicely that way. 
Also, the advanced wind turbine, you build that on water, which means it doesn't have to get in the way of your land uh, usage. Okay. Okay, so I need a cemetery. That seems like a good spot to build one. This is so you don't end up with dead people accumulating in the streets or whatever. Uh, that makes people unhappy. Oops. So I, while I'm here, I'm going to save the game. It would suck to lose what I've done so far. So, No, that's not what I need. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, right. I was going to... set up so I could start building a transit system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this in, in a loop, and I'm going to run it in the other loop, the same loop in the other direction. So... Actually, I want that there. Okay. And now, I'll set one going the other way. Okay, so that's two bus loops. Now, also makes sense to have a route going up into the
industrial area. It takes a while for that to uh, fully take effect in the traffic effects, but it does help in the long run, especially if, if these end up getting higher density. Now, I've got demand for industrial that I should actually uh, accommodate some. So I'll go ahead and do that. fire station over here as well. So I'm going to do that right away. And now Again, D zone that. Okay. Oops. Okay. Whoops. Probably go, yep, power is going to be a problem. That's the thing, the uh, industrial sucks up a fair bit of power. Kind of like real life that way. Okay, so water's good, power's on the edge.
Now, something I haven't done in previous playthroughs is I haven't I haven't done anything with districts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this area here a district. And I'm going to call that Since by the time the uh, and by the time the uh, town finishes growing, that's going to be well old. Now I have some demand issues for what the hell no Some demand issues for residential. This is that uh, default small park I was talking about.
Now, fun thing is you can build bridges and you can build them part way into the water and just leave them hanging, which is kind of funny. But something else you can do is you can build intersections over the water as well, which is really quite handy. I discovered that in another game where I, I had a traffic issue on a bridge and I managed to solve it by bringing a perpendicular bridge into it. Yeah, I still have a strong demand for residential going here. Okay, now, because I'm coming off a wider road, I have to go that extra tick here. issue again. Okay. Because I've gone out onto the water and I've built much larger uh, windmills, I'm removing the ones on land because, well, I don't need them anymore. These ones are 20 megawatts, and these ones were averaging 7. And now I've got enough electricity, I'm probably good for a while. And uh, water is going to be starting to be an issue, so I better get ahead of that. Okay, so water and wastewater are sorted for the moment.
Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna demolish these abandoned buildings. You don't actually need to, but it does improve the land values. Well, I've been uh, going at this for a while now, so I'm going to save the game, and I'm going to call that the end of part one. So. Okay, so that's the end of part one. I'll see you in part two.